How's it going, guys? And welcome back to my ultimate Amara guide. In this part, we're going to be diving deep into Amara's action stills and covering the damage formulas for all of them so that you can learn how to maximize the damage of each of them. Well, this information is pretty niche for the most part, as it isn't very necessary for a vast majority of builds. It can still be pretty important, especially if you're going for an action still damage focused build. But more than that, I just find it to be an interesting subject. But with that being said, let's get on into things. First off, though, before getting into actual skill formulas, let's first talk about the sources of the damage types that we're going to be covering. For our more generic ones, of course, we have things like splash, skill, and elemental damage, though these three are pretty self-explanatory. Generally, any damage bonuses that boost one of these will say that they boost one of these, though elemental damage does get a little bit more complicated as there is the elemental multiplier which comes along with it. I've shortened this down in the actual formulas, as you'll see, to just le mult, but this is what that is referring to. Simply put, though, this is just the damage multiplier for elemental effectiveness against different health bars. Here's an infographic showing all of them, and using this, for example, if we were calculating shock damage on flesh, the multiplier would be 0.65 times. If it was incendiary on flesh, the multiplier would be 1.75 times. It is also worth keeping in mind that even if you are on normal mode, once you enable mayhem, the true Vault Hunter mode numbers will be what applies. We then have crit damage, which is another pretty generic one. However, it is also worth keeping in mind with this that when applicable, it will have the base two times multiplier along with it, which is just the actual damage multiplier from a critical hit. Where things can get a little bit more complicated is V1 and V2 damage. These are overall damage bonuses, but it can be kind of difficult to figure out the sources of them. But the big ones for V1 are the Victory Rush Artifact and the Terror Damage Anointment. And V2 is where you'll find things like your specific action still damage anointments, like the Slam Damage, Cast Damage, Flare Damage Anointments. Guardian Angel Damage Buff goes here, 25% on grenade throw, 150 over 90, and the icebreaker. We then have debuffs. These are things that cause enemies to take more damage that comes from weapons, being the piss, the eruption, and the execute, and damage increases, which function similar to debuffs, increasing the damage that enemies take, but these don't come from weapons, which makes them a separate multiplier from the debuffs. These are things like Laid Bare and Harmageddon. And finally here, it is also worth mentioning that action stills that deal splash damage can proc Unweave the Rainbow. Now finally, just for a quick refresher, for the sake of not overcomplicating each formula, I've shortened the damage bonuses to just one plus the damage type. But keep in mind that each color-coded section contains all of the additive damage sources. If we break down the skill damage, for example, it would look more like this. One plus Atman plus Do Harm plus Tom still damage plus any other skill damage source that you may have. But each source of that damage type is added together within. If you would still like a bit more detail on how these damage formulas actually work, I recommend giving the previous video about the subject a watch which should be popping up in the corner somewhere and will be linked down in the description. But finally, let's get into the actual damage formulas, starting with Face Slam, Fracture, and Downfall. Now this is the Face Slam formula, however it does apply to both Fracture and Part of Downfall, though they have a couple other separate things that we'll get into in a moment. But this formula here, the base damage times 31 for our Mayhem scaling, times Still Damage, times Splash, times Elemental, times V1, times V2, times our debuffs, and times our damage increases. Though coming to Fracture, the first big difference is that it does not get the slam damage skill anointment. This is simply a bug, it just hasn't ever been fixed, it's supposed to get this bonus, but it does not, as unfortunately Fracture is the unloved child of these three action stills. But what Fracture does have is elemental puddles which trail behind it as it gets cast, and these puddles have a base damage of 1733. This also for some reason has a higher mayhem staling at 34 times, but beyond that only gets elemental damage, V1, V2, and then of course our debuffs and damage increases, but it does not get splash or still damage. Now downfall, again for the actual slam part, does follow the basic slam damage formula, however the beam also does have its own damage formula. While generally the same, it does have the single big difference of being able to crit, meaning it can stale from your crit damage bonuses. Along with that though, while it does look the same, this is actually a damage per second formula, not necessarily just the damage that you'll get with each hit of the downfall beam, as that kind of varies a little bit, simply because the way this damage is calculated is that while it does get 31 times mayhem staling on the damage per second, the actual beam ticks three times a second, so this formula will provide your DPS, however again it will not be equal to the damage that you see in the actual damage numbers. That'll do it for the slam anointments though, so moving into phase cast, our base formula here is looking like this. Very similar, it just does not get splash damage, however this also isn't entirely true. Every form of phase cast can deal splash damage, however it's only when it impacts a surface and not when it impacts 
an enemy. If you impact phase task right in front of an enemy, that enemy will then take this formula with splash damage added to it. But generally, you are just going to be hitting enemies directly with phase cast, and this is what you'll be looking at. Now, the base impact for deliverance is the same thing. However, the orbs themselves have a base damage of 4,419, but that is the only difference here. Everything else stays the same. Tandava just makes phase cast always deal that splash damage even when impacting an enemy. So again, it's the same formula, just now having splash damage added to it constantly. And finally, reverberation where things get fucking weird. Reverberation penetrates through enemies and is supposed to get a 50% damage bonus with each enemy hit. However, this isn't entirely true, as instead the damage bonus is actually 20% per enemy hit. But this damage also comes with a constant 2.5 times multiplier, which does technically give us the same effect, but it's just a little bit weird in how it does it. But simply, we have our base damage times 2.5 times 31 for our mayhem scaling, and then you multiply that by 1 plus 0.2 per enemy hit. After that, it's the same as previous skill damage, elemental damage, V1, V2, debuffs, and our damage increases. Now, moving to phase grasp, it's important to note that phase grasp doesn't actually usually deal damage itself, being really just crowd control. However, if an enemy is immune to that grasp, it will instead just take damage. I can't really think of a single reason why anyone would need to calculate this damage. However, I did go ahead and figure out a formula for it anyways, and no surprises here, it's just base damage times mayhem staling times still damage, elemental V1, V2, debuffs, and our damage increases. This is the same case for the Eternal Fist, however, things do get a little bit different with Fist Over Matter, as Fist Over Matter itself will actually deal continuous damage to the grass target, and on top of that, does actually deal splash damage, so we can slot that into this formula now as well. But finally, to the real interesting one, and the one that will give you a migraine if you don't already have one, ties that bind, which of course will link nearby enemies to the center target and transfer 20% of the damage dealt to the main target to the link targets. This damage share is converted to your action skill element. This damage does also count as skill damage and therefore does get mayhem staling. However, it's not the usual mayhem staling, instead only getting a 6.78 times multiplier. But this gives us our formula, which is our damage dealt times 0.2, which is our 20% share, times 6.78 for our mayhem staling. Beyond that, it also gets skill damage, elemental damage, V1, V2, and our debuffs and our damage increases. But that's not all because it is worth keeping in mind that a lot of this damage is actually double dipping, being the V1, V2, elemental damage, and presumably skill damage if you actually do have a way to deal it to the main enemy itself. This will also double dip debuffs and laid bare if it's applied to both the enemies that are being hit. Though the reason that this happens and what double dipping means for those unaware is simply that something is causing your damage to benefit from the same damage source twice. So say you're using 25% on grenade throw, which of course is V2 damage. V2 damage is applying to your weapons themselves as you fire them, but it's also applying to ties that bind damage. So when your grasp target is shot with that V2 damage, that V2 damage is increasing the damage that they take, which in turn is being transferred to the other enemies, but because that transferred damage also gets V2 damage, that damage bonus applies again. Now the way that ties that bind works with bonus elements is simply that it just adds all the numbers together before transferring 20% of that total, which means as long as you're matching elements on your main target, it will increase the damage dealt to all other targets. But this also has the added benefit of double dipping global elements. These are things like URAD and the Revolter, bonus elements which just apply to pretty much everything that you do. This is because, again, like the other double dip example, the Revolter provides a bonus element to your guns, however it also applies to your action skills. So that damage on your gun is being added to the main damage, that is being transferred by ties that bind, and then the ties that bind damage is getting the Revolter applied to it again. But that'll be about everything for ties that bind. Just one final note for phase grasp as a whole though, it will only proc laid bare when actually dealing damage to an enemy. So this means when the enemy is immune to the grasp, if you're using fist over matter or revelation, or with ties that bind, any enemy that gets tied will get laid bare applied, however not the enemy that you actually grasp. And now to our final action skill, phase flare. So with phase flare, when the orb is meleeed, it will take in 14.41% or 0.1441 of that melee damage and stores it into the base damage. Each melee hit will stack additively on top of these other hits. For example, if we melee for 10,000 damage, the base damage of the orb will go up by 1,441 damage. The second hit will add another 1,441 damage and so on. You can melee the orb five times before it'll pop, but if you deal too much damage, it will sometimes pop earlier as there seems to be a limit on how much that it can actually take, which seems to be somewhere around 30 to 50 million. It's kind of hard to tell exactly. Now, Phase Flare also does have two different sources 
pieces of damage. It has the impact damage, which is when it actually initially connects with an enemy. And there's the area damage, which is the glowing radius around it, which deals constant damage. Starting with the impact damage, this is what our formula is looking like. Having our base damage plus our melee damage multiplied by that 0.1441. And then having that all multiplied by 31 times for our mayhem scaling. We then of course have skill, splash, elemental, V1, V2, debuffs, and our damage increases. Now the area damage is where things did a little goofy, as while it has the same general formula, for some reason, this is the percentage of melee damage which gets converted. It can be thought of easier as about a third of that 14.41% that goes into the impact damage, but no matter what, it's just a messy fucking number. But this leaves the area formula looking like this. Base damage plus melee damage times 0.044 4322621 times 31, the rest of the formula staying the same. And then finally here, when the duration of the action still ends, or just when the orb itself pops from too many hits, it will explode and deal three times the current damage of the orb, which would simply be this incredibly complicated formula. But those are the general formulas for the orb skills. On to Shooting Star though, this action still makes the orb fire out smaller orbs, which deal a base damage of 2079. This damage is increased by 12.5% of the melee damage stored within the orb. The smaller orbs also have the ability to crit, which leaves the formula for them looking like this. 2079, of course, being our base damage, plus the melee damage, times 0.125, which is our 12.5%, times 31 for our mayhem scaling, and then skill damage, splash damage, elemental, V1, V2, crit damage, and then debuffs and damage increases. And finally here for our orbs is light fantastic, making it so that Amara can no longer slap the orb, but she can still drag it around to reposition, and with each enemy killed by the orb, it will gain increased damage. It is really hard to tell, but this damage increase seems to be around 3k on the impact damage and around 460 on the area. This wasn't super consistent, having a little bit of variance between, but it was around generally the same numbers each time, and at the very least, I could tell it seemed to be an additive bonus. I'm not super confident in these findings though, so do take this formula with a grain of salt. If anyone in the comments is able to provide more specifics on how this damage stacking for Light Fantastic actually works, I would definitely appreciate and also pin said comment. But from my findings, these are the impact and area damage formulas. They're both the same as usual, getting skill, splash, elemental, V1, V2, debuffs, and damage increases. However, for impact, we have our base damage, plus around 3,000 times the enemies killed, times 31 for the mayhem scaling. And for the area, we have base damage, plus around 460-ish, times enemies killed, times 31 for our mayhem scaling. That's gonna about do it for our action stills, but before we end off here, I would like to talk about Revelation and briefly touch on a couple of the other augments, as I do feel that they are relevant here. So this is the revelation damage formula, base damage of course, times 31 for the mayhem scaling, still damage, splash damage, elemental, v1, v2, debuffs, and damage increases. Pretty simple stuff, but revelation always is better for damage pretty much for every action still, except for reverberation, just due to how high its base damage is, and that revelation doesn't really make up for it. Revelation does also activate laid bear and samsara, as it does count as still damage that comes from your action still. And while it says it reduces your action still damage by 15%, it actually only does 11%. This is a common theme among the rest of the augments that reduce Amara's action still damage, with Stillness of Mind being 18.3% instead of 25%, Allure being 15% and not 20%, and Glamour being 7.5% and not 10%. But that's gonna about do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this massive fucking info dump about action stills, and hopefully you guys learned a little something along the way. If you've got any other questions, leave a comment down below and I will answer to the best of my ability. And maybe while you're down there, consider leaving a like and subscribing. Down in the description will also be a link to my Twitch channel where I'll be live right after this video goes up. And just below that is a link to my Discord server where you can come and join and hang out or ask me any questions that you may have more directly. But with that all being said, I hope to see you guys in the next one.